Hi guys, it's Allie from the donor team. Happy Thursday, I'm back again. Um, I took a couple of weeks off. Um, didn't want to make this too repetitive. Eventually I'm going to run out of things to talk about. I know that I do repeat myself week after week, but not everybody goes back to um, look for my old videos. So I'll uh, do a quick overview of our package options while everybody's half and on. And um, then I'll just touch on a few of our most recent questions that I've seen commonly. Hi, Julia. All right, so uh, package options for our donor egg program. We've got the fresh egg with fresh embryo transfer package. It's currently 12,000, you receive six fresh eggs. We coordinate your cycle with the donor cycle, so we prepare you for transfer, for embryo transfer, while your donor is in stimulation and preparing for her egg retrieval. Hi, Karen, hi, Tamara. Um, and so we're preparing you for transfer while she's preparing for her egg retrieval. They had six fresh eggs for 12,000, the success is 55%. We uh, transfer one, possibly two embryos. Uh, hi, Kim. Oh my God, it's so nice to see you. Hi, Natalie. Um, and so uh, we will transfer one to two embryos, depending on the quality. It's most often one. ACOG is recommending that we transfer only one at a time. We'll freeze any leftover embryos, if freezable. And um, the cost of that package is uh, covers the freezing for up to a year. After a year, uh, you will get billed. The second package, our most popular package, is the six fresh egg to create and freeze embryos. Um, and so with that package, we are creating and freezing those embryos. So we're preparing the donor for her egg retrieval. Um, on egg retrieval, we inject those eggs with your partner's or your donor sperm, the sperm that you choose. Um, and then we freeze any embryos that result. We start planning your frozen transfer once you have embryos frozen and not before that. Um, and that's six fresh eggs create and freeze for 9,000 currently. Now these prices I'm sharing with you are always subject to change. Um, so this is just current, this is what they are right now. Um, we do have banked eggs available, six banked eggs uh, for 9,000. And um, the so the success rate with the banked eggs is about 45%. I didn't say, uh, I didn't talk about the create and freeze package, that's about 50%. So back to the banked eggs, six banked eggs. Um, and what happens is we will prepare your uterine lining for transfer. Once your lining is ready, we will schedule your egg thaw and transfer three to five days later, typically three days. Um, the, the sperm is injected into the eggs on egg thaw day. You get a call a day later um, and we will tell you how, about fertilization and give you your appointment for transfer. Now, I did talk about in a previous video that Dr. Kiltz is recommending that we actually thaw those eggs ahead of time and create and freeze embryos ahead of time. Um, reason being is that banked eggs can be finicky and it's one cell that we're freezing. So if you can imagine that's one delicate cell and they can, and either they're going to survive the thaw or they're not. We've seen egg thaws where all six eggs will survive and we've seen egg thaws where none of them survive. And so you've gotta have reasonable expectations, you've gotta be flexible. But just one way, if you're traveling from California to Syracuse, um, one way to avoid disappointing news is to thaw those eggs ahead of time, create and freeze embryos, and then plan your frozen embryo transfer. So again, that's six banked eggs for 9,000. Um, we do offer an add-on package of four banked eggs. Um, the add-on package is for those of you that are still doing your own IVF cycle and want that want to make sure it's it's like an insurance policy so you want to make sure that you get an embryo transfer regardless in the event that maybe you don't um, get any eggs from your egg retrieval and so um, we offer that package for four banked eggs you do need to let your nurse know when she is scheduling your egg retrieval that you have eggs to be thawed the lab has to prepare ahead of time um, and so Again, it's just an insurance policy. You don't get any eggs from your own egg retrieval. You still have these donor eggs to be thawed and fertilized. Um, so something to think about. 
you can always purchase additional eggs with any of these package options. If you're purchasing additional fresh eggs, they're 1,500 to 2,000 for each additional. And um, I believe banked eggs is 1,500 for each additional egg. If you're doing an add-on package, each additional egg is 1,000. Um, again, prices are subject to change. Um, we also have a known donor option. Actually, since we've been so low on donors over these last several months, maybe this past year, I've noticed an influx of those of you that are recruiting your own known donor, whether it's a friend, a family member, or, or a friend of a friend. Um, the great thing about, a known, about using a known donor is that you receive all the eggs from that cycle. Um, the cost of a known donor cycle currently is 9000 and that covers her medications, all her testing, her monitoring, and her egg retrieval. Now, if she's monitored outside our office, you will be responsible for those um, the, the monitoring fees for wherever she is monitored. And so um, that's a great option. It's a great way to get more embryos than from whatever results from just six eggs. You, you may end up with 30 eggs. I'm not saying that you need that many. I'm not saying anybody needs that many, but if you're looking to bank eggs for future children, known donor is a great route to take. Um, a lot of you are still asking about PGT um, testing, testing on those embryos for either gender, chromosomes. Well, if you're testing for gender, we're going to test chromosomes as well. It's important for you to understand that when we're doing PGT testing, biopsying your embryo. So we're taking a chunk of cells away from that embryo and we're sending those cells to a lab to be evaluated. The cost is an additional two to $3,000. And I need to know when you make your match with your donor that that's your intention. This is not a last minute procedure. So I need to know ahead of time. There's consents. You need to um, pay the lab. Currently we're using Cooper Genomics for this testing. Um, and so things need to be put into place so this testing can be done. It's important for you to know that we can't guarantee you normal embryos or the gender you're looking for if that's why you're doing it. Um, and so it's a chance that you take. If you are doing PGT testing, I'm always recommending that number one, you use fresh eggs for this um, type of cycle um, to maximize the number of embryos that we can um, biopsy on day five, six, or seven. And, um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. So we're using fresh eggs and, um, oh, I wanted to tell you that you should always purchase additional eggs um, to increase your chances. Sorry, I lose my train of thought sometimes. Um, and so I'm going to just take a peek and look um, if there's any questions. What comes, Amy Lynn, forgive me if I ask this wrong, I'm very new. What comes in a regular package for a couple who has normal cycles and sperm? So I'm not, are you asking about donor eggs or are you asking about using your own eggs? Um, maybe Melissa, I see Melissa on replying to some people, so I don't know if she has replied to you yet. Um, but the packages are as what I had just explained, uh, the six fresh eggs. If you're using your own eggs, contact the office, talk to the financial person. She will tell you what's included in a package. Ah, you did just respond using your own eggs. So yes, call, call the financial office, whether they'll tell you what your self pay costs are and what's included, um, in any package. If you're, um, if you're do, using the self-pay cost, if you have insurance coverage, they can maybe look at your insurance a lot. They have an idea as to um, what most insurances are covering right now. Sorry, I can see a hair. Okay, so let me take a look at my list here if there's anything else. Um, I did note uh, that we are currently transferring or recommending uh, single embryo transfers. We follow ACOG guidelines. And, um, but Dr. Kiltz or Dr. Corley, whomever is doing your transfer, if you really want to transfer an additional embryo, talk to them. Um, they will review the success. They'll review the risks. And together, you can come up with a plan. Um, I wanted to talk about waiting lists because I have a lot of you messaging myself, Molly, Melissa, 
um, Elizabeth, about waiting lists right now. And so a lot of the donors that you'll see posted, um, the ones that are currently matched, they likely do have waiting lists because we're so low on donors right now. Um, our numbers are improving though. I bet you saw a lot of new faces this week. But because we're low, uh, we're finding that um, there's several recipients asking about the same donor. So when you message us through your portal, that gets date and time stamped. Um, we, ma we match donors based on the date and time you messaged us. So we try to be as fair as we can. If that donor is currently matched when you message us, we will then add you to the waiting list if that's what you want to do. We can add you to up to three waiting lists but it's your responsibility to log into your portal daily, take a look for new faces or at new faces. And, um, and if you notice one of those donors you had been waiting for is gone, well, it's because she has chosen not to cycle again or she's done all six of her cycles. So it's important for you to keep track. And if you have questions, let us know. But the waiting lists are a courtesy. Um, we cannot follow up with every person on those waiting lists to let them know when when a donor has no longer um, is no longer cycling. It's also important for you to know that when you're matched with a donor, if your name comes up on another waiting list and you're already matched with another donor, we're going to remove your name from that waiting list. We can't be uh, keeping people on waiting lists while they're matched. We need to allow those donors um, or those recipients waiting on those donors an opportunity. And it makes our job easier if as people get matched, that then we can revise those lists and remove names um, so that when, when it's time to match a donor again, it, it just makes it easy, it makes the process faster for us. And so please understand that we can't keep you on waiting lists while you're matched and in cycle with other donors. But it's important for you to also know that we're not gonna immediately re remove you we're removing names as donors come up as available. We have Molly go through those waiting lists, look to see who's matched. We take those names off and she sends them to us. We start at the top of the waiting list and work our way down. So again, we're trying to be fair. We're trying to keep our job um, as efficient as we can so that we can move through and, and get you your eggs as fast as we can. Um, the process does take several weeks. And so we appreciate your patience. Um, with this process. I know it's frustrating. I know it's emotional. Um, and, and I know that there, there are, have been donors in the past that have changed their minds mid-cycle or before they start cycling. Or the minute you match with them, they decide, well, maybe this isn't for me. And, you know, it's really, it's important for you to understand that these are human beings and some of these things are out of our control. And as much as we hate, or as much as you hate hearing bad news. We hate delivering bad news. So we appreciate your patience and we're here to help. Uh, make sure you message us through your portal. That's the best way to get a hold of us. If you need a phone call, please message us with a day and time. We'll put you on our calendar. We'll give you a call. Um, we'll answer any questions that you have. I also wanted to talk about uh, the screening that we do for our donors um, when we bring a new donor into the program. We're starting to test them before we're putting them up as available. Um, when, when we had maybe lesser recipients and more donors, we would just put them up and then we would test them as they got matched. But since we're really trying to help move things along, um, we are doing the testing ahead of time. Our donors, uh, we review their medical history Everybody has something in their family history, and so we try to um, we try to remove those donors that maybe have some significant genetic history in their background. Um, but we can't remove everyone. Everybody's got something. We would have no donors. So when we do put a donor into the program, we are bringing them in. They get an ultrasound, so we look at their antral follicle count or their resting follicles at the beginning of their cycle or in the middle, depends on where they are when they come in, but we do take a look at their ovaries. Um, we draw an AMH level, it's a guideline to tell us what their ovarian reserve looks like. And, and so um, we do have parameters we follow with that. Um, we're doing a complete blood count to make sure they're generally healthy, and we're doing a genetic panel. Our, 
our old genetic panel was the top 21 most highly genetic re related diseases. We have a new one, new and improved. It's the top 24 most highly genetic related diseases. Now, if you're, if it's important for you to know which panel, you're welcome to ask us. We can tell you and we can share the diseases um, that were tested from that panel. Um, I have a list right on my desktop, but it's easy for me to copy and paste. So if you need to know, send me a message, I'll help you. So I'm going to just take a quick look. Um, let's see. Any other questions? Hi, Donette. I'll take a look. I see you responded in the portal. I did see your message. I will address that when I log off. Hi, Marcy. You're interested in coming to our clinic. Call the office. Uh, make your appointment for your consultation. Uh, we'll get you in as soon as we can. Call as soon as you can because I know that we're scheduling out several months. So um, for sure, give a call and, and get that going. Uh, once you've had your consultation, you're welcome to reach out to either myself or Melissa White. And she, either of us will get back to you and um, we'll get you going. Let's see, anything else? I was wondering, I'm wanting to do a fresh. If possible, do I need to let you guys know that? Yes, we need to know if you decide you're gonna do the fresh egg with fresh embryo transfer, um, there's another piece to our workup that we need to do with you. We've gotta do what's called a mock cycle. The mock cycle is a test to see how your uterine lining responds to estrogen. Um, and so, what we would do is we would have you call day one of your period. We would bring you in or send you for an ultrasound day three, ultrasound um, and blood work. If all is well, meaning lining's thin, hormone levels are low, we'll start you on estrogen, send you back um, seven to 10 days later to measure that uterine lining. If it has thickened appropriately, your mock cycle is complete. But again, it's important for us to do this test ahead of time so we know how much estrogen and how long it takes to prepare your lining for transfer. So when you're in cycle with the egg donor, we know that we can prepare you for transfer for when she's ready for her egg retrieval. So very important. You filled out the form two weeks ago, Kayla, but you haven't heard back. I'm not sure what forms you filled out. If you wanna message me through your portal, Send me a message and let me know. We'll talk further. Crystal, you're starting your cycle next week. Good luck to you. All right, well, I think that's it. This has been about 15 minutes. I don't want to make these too long. Um, you're welcome to continue to comment. I do look back to see if there's questions that went unanswered. And again, message myself, Melissa, or um, Molly through your portal, and we'll, um, we'll get back to you with some information. Have a great Thursday, and I'll see you next week. Bye.